Hey everyone, how's it going? Adam here again with a, another SimHub tutorial. This time uh, we're going to take a look at NCalc within SimHub and I've been trying to come up with a way to film this and talk about NCalc and not make this like a four hour long video. So we're going to break this up into chunks and thankfully I had a viewer reach out to me just the other day. He's been working on a dashboard for SimHub and he wants to have some pop-up alerts that work when TC settings are changed or break bias is changed. And he was not getting those to work. And we use NCalc to make that happen. And I thought this is a perfect way to get started in NCalc. It's one of the first things that I did when I was learning SimHub. And hopefully I can make this simple enough to where everybody can follow through and you can really get in. I did a video a while back where I talked about pop-ups, but I kind of rushed through NCalc and what it is and what it does and how you use it. So I'm going to spend a little more time getting into some detail there. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So you can see I've got the dash editor up. I'm in SimHub and we've got a dashboard. This is what uh, the viewer sent over to me. And one of the first things he wanted to do was get these pop-up alerts to work. So we can see right here that he's got a break bias grouping built in. He's got the visibility turned off. Let's go ahead and turn it on so we can see what we're looking at. Okay, break bias. We've got a, a little text field title, and let's make sure this is correct. So this is just a normal text field. We've got break bias in there. This is the break bias number, and we're going to click this function to make sure. So he's got in here ncalc formula. It's perfect. Okay, so this is where we're going to start. Hopefully you can see this, um, that it's being captured well enough, and you can see the text here. So this is what NCALC does for us. It lets us build in formulas similar to, if you're familiar with Excel, um, doing if statements or sums, additions, you know, like kind of a lot of those. NCALC is, is similar to that in a number of ways. Um, there's some other functions that are built in here that you won't find there, but if you know how to write an if statement in Excel, you will pretty much be okay with NCALC. So when you're in the text binding or color, and when you're, whenever you're in this window right here, when you want to do a computed value for something, the NCALC formula will always appear in this window. Now, I'm going to clear all of this out because we know we want this one to be for break bias. So if you come down to here into NCALC, you'll see two windows, insert function and insert property. Now, this one's simple. All we want this one to do is to display the current break bias value. So we are going to go to insert property. I always recommend checking this box right here to show specific properties to the game that you have selected. Um, there's a number of properties, especially for iRacing, that SimHub collects by default, but they don't show unless you click that checkbox. So if you're building a dashboard for ACC or iRacing or whatever it might be, I just recommend check that first. You will have to check it every time because it doesn't stay checked by default. And so let's go ahead in the available properties window. Let's type in break and let's see what comes up. So data core plug in this blue header and you'll see a couple of different ones. Now this is a, a plugin that Gary Swallow put together. Um, but anytime you see a big blue, that's just the header for the different uh, section of data that's being collected. But data core plug in is the default iRacing data that SimHub collects or ingests and 95% of everything you're ever going to want to do with a dashboard is going to be right here in the data core plugin. SimHub does an amazing job of collecting the key data points from most sims for you. And right here we can see game data break bias. All we have to do is double click on it and it will show simply break bias, but I don't like doing that. So we're going to backspace that out and go back into insert properties. Again, we have to recheck the box and we're going to type in 
break. I like to right click and hit copy name on the break bias. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So we'll copy the name. We're going to close that out. We're going to put our square brackets in. And you notice too, as soon as I started typing the square brackets, all of the properties appeared right here as well. I don't generally like to do that because sometimes I don't always know what I'm looking for and it's easier just to kind of search. So we'll put an open bracket. I will paste the name that I have copied and we will close the bracket off. And now this is going to look at the data core plugin game data break bias. Now, the reason I'm doing this instead of just having it be break bias is now I specifically know looking at this data core plugin dot game data where my break bias value is coming from if I want to edit this down the road. And that's it. That's all we need to do in here to format this. Well, I mean, we can format it differently down here. Um, but this is good. But to get that break bias value from iRacing or ACC or American Truck Simulator, if that's what uh, you're playing, um, that's all we need. So we're going to click OK on that. Now we've already got these three items right here. So we've got this black rectangle that is going to appear to hide everything that's behind it. So the main dashboard. We've got our break bias title text and then our actual break bias value right here. All of these are into a group already. If you don't know how to do that, to put these into a group, you wanna hold down control, select all three of the items, and then on your keyboard, just press control G. That will group all of the items, and now we can apply the visibility toggle directly to everything that is in this group. So now that we've got the break bias group highlighted and not one of the individual items within our group we're going to come right down to here and we are going to click on the visibility binding and let's type in a computed value now this is where we're going to get into the functions that are available for simhub so we're going to click insert function and when we open this up, you're going to see a number of functions already here. Some of these might look familiar. Um, absolute values as in blinking, changed. A lot of these we want to show. Now we need two statements for this, at least the way I like to build it. You can build this a number of different ways. But for a simple alert pop up, the way I like to do it first is let's grab an if statement right here here's the classic if statement and it tells you what you need to know to make the if statement work so if the condition and then you have to give it what to do if it's a true result what to do if it's a false result so we're just gonna double click on the if so now the condition is right here so if condition so what is our condition going to be to cause us to show that break bias alert well, we want to see if the break bias value changes, that's when we want to show that pop up. If it doesn't change, we don't need to worry about it. So we're going to need a second function here. So we're going to do if we're going to grab another function and this one is called changed. Now, when you see here changed, there's this delay and then the value. So we're going to go ahead and double click that and you can see it added in right here. We're going to get rid of this condition because now we've got our condition built in here so the delay is where we want to see how long ago this thing changed so now i generally do for pop-ups 2000 and what that is, is that's 2000 milliseconds or two seconds so now sim hub is going to always be looking back over the last two seconds to see if this value that we're going to put in here changed. If it changed, it's going to display it um, for two seconds. It's I struggle to explain this sometimes, but basically if the value changed within the last two seconds, it will be displayed. So if you change it right now for two seconds, you will see that pop up. So change so our value. We actually don't want to put a value in here. We want to go back into property. Click checkbox again. Oops, if I can type, 
copyright bias. Again, I like to copy the name. You don't have to, you can just double click, but for me, it makes it cleaner. We're gonna open up our square brackets. We're gonna paste that in there. Okay, so now we've got if changed within the last two seconds, and if it's the break bias value that has changed within the last two seconds. If the result is true, now for pop-up alerts, it's a binary, it's true and false, one and zero. So if the break bias has changed within the last two seconds, all we wanna do is put a one for yes, and a zero for no. And that's our raw result right down here is zero. So SimHub has reached out into iRacing to look to see if in the last two seconds did the break bias value change. If it did, it's going to turn return a one for this value. If it didn't, it's going to return a zero. A one being returned, we'll click OK on this, means now this will be visible. A zero being returned means it will stay hidden until we change the break bias value. Now there's a number of other functions we can do within NCALC, and we can see that he's got one built in here for traction control. So let's hide this. Okay, so we're gonna change this a little bit here. Let's go to the title, and we're gonna make this. No, well, I don't have enough room, and I'm not gonna buy it. So we're just gonna do TC. TC's nice and simple, and I wanna come up here, and I wanna make sure this is centered. And I want to make sure this is centered as well, just because it looks a little cleaner. All right, let's go on our traction control. Let's hit the text function, game data, traction control level. Now you can see here, this person has put in greater than zero. Um, you don't need that if you're just trying to get the absolute value that is currently there. Traction control level, you can have it set at zero, so I would not put that in there. Brake bias will never be at zero. So if you put that in there, it's always going to be the brake bias value. But traction controls can be set to zero, so we want to make sure that that's off because we're not there. Because we want to be able to show traction control levels regardless of what it's set at. I'm going to click OK here, and we can see everything's already in a traction control group. So we're going to hit the toggle visibility to turn it off. And it looks like there's a function already here, so let's take a look. OK, so perfect. We can see that when he started building this dash, he was on the right path. He put the changed in here. So we're going to keep our traction control level there, and we're just going to go back to our if changed. And then we always want to make sure to the parentheses game, anybody who works in software development or myself, I'm in data science, um, anybody who's ever tried to really write some, some code um, understands the nightmare that the parentheses game can be. So always check and count your parentheses. If you're having errors, if you see down here in this raw result, expression error mismatched, EOF stands for end of field, expecting a closed parentheses. Count your parentheses. If you open one up, make sure you close it. So if changed, we're going to go 2000 milliseconds again for the traction control level. We'll close the parentheses, closing the parentheses. Anything that's in this group right here applies to the changed function. So if that changed, we'll go one for yes, zero for no, and we'll make sure to close off all parentheses now, and we'll see our zero as our raw result. And we'll click OK there, and now our traction control pop-up will work anytime we change the traction control value in a session. Um, let's see, there's a pit one here. Let's see what this one is. This one seems to be doing nothing, so we're going to delete that one out. But we do have a pit lane speed limiter. So let's take a look at this one. Pit limiter on. Everything is already in a group. So let's toggle the visibility. Data core pit limiter on is greater than zero. This is very simple, but this one should actually work. If the data core, we'll do this a little better though, just to make sure. Um, Again, we're going to want to put an if statement in here. So we'll go back. If open parentheses data core plug in on. 
um, is greater than zero. In fact, I can type this morning. Uh, one for yes, zero for no. We'll hit enter. And this is going to return a raw result of false. This is just saying that the pit limiter is not on. True and false. One is always true. False is always zero. That's the beauty of binary. It's very simple. So there we go. We have now updated and fixed using NCALC the three pop-up alerts here. But let's take a quick look and let's go and look at some of the other functions. Again, if we insert a property, this is all of the available data in the game that we can collect and i've got a few things here because i've got some plugins that other people have developed added into sim hub but the functions are what you really want to look at for ncalc this is the important part and every one of these functions will tell you what you need to apply the function so most of the common ones are the if and the changed those are the ones that you are going to use more often than not. But some of the things that I also really love that's built in here, um, for instance, the color changing relative timers where it goes red or green um, based on a gap to another driver. And that one is also in here and that is, is decreasing or is increasing? And again, it will look at the similar to the changed function. Um, it will ask for a delay. So how far back in time do you want SimHub to look to see if this value has changed? And then the value as well. So hopefully this is a good introduction into NCALC and what it is. Uh, again, similarly, if you've worked in Excel and you've written some formulas there before, you should have no issues here. It's not that difficult once you understand it and once you kind of remember that every time you open a parenthesis, you need to close it. And then to look at, again, what SimHub wants for the function because it will tell you. If changed, uh, blink, it wants a blinker name, a delay, and then the current status. I mean, all kinds of functions are built in here and, you know, it tells you what you need. So just take a moment, read exactly what it's looking for. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the comments down below. I do my best to stay on top of that. Or if you happen to be in a Discord server that you also see me in, uh, feel free to send me a message there and ask me a question. I don't have my own Discord server, and I don't quite think I'll set one up, to be honest, for this kind of stuff, because I'm in so many other Discords. Um, but yeah, so hopefully if that did help, if, it, if it's enough to get you started to playing with NCALC, uh, give that video a thumbs up so that other people can find this and hopefully get some help as well. If you are still unclear as to NCALC and kind of what it is you need to do to better understand it, leave me some comments and I will either redo this video or go ahead and make another one to go more in depth. But at its highest level, that should hopefully be enough to get you started. So thanks for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.